Next, we will look at functions. What role do they play in a script? Open up your web browser and open up the link, the bookmark which you created for the Unity scripting reference and scripting overview. Now, the information here can be a little hard to find. We're talking about functions, we're talking about things that work on a script, which is quite often known as a mono behavior. So, if we click over here where it says mono behavior, now we have a list of all the functions that are available to a script. These are inbuilt. You can certainly create your own functions, but first I will cover the inbuilt functions. Scroll down to functions. The first three we will be using invoke, invoke repeating, and cancel invoke. To find more out about these functions, simply click on the name and you'll come to a description page. There are just some functions. Overridable functions. I cannot explain that, but there are simply more built in functions that will make scripts happen. First three pretty much essentially first five, top five, is everything that you're going to be using most often. We have the awake, we have the start, we have an update, we have a fixed update, and then we have a late update. Again, you can click on each one of these to get a description and also an example. So, function update is called every frame. And we are essentially working with mono behavior scripts, so this is true for us. Update is called every frame, every game cycle, every loop. Fixed update is essentially for physics behavior. You want to put as little amount of calculations in a fixed update as possible. Then we have a late update. This is very useful for a camera. So in your update and your fixed update, you can move your objects, and then when they have moved in a late update, you move your camera. And this helps to reduce a shuttering effect. As we go down, there are a lot more built-in functions. I don't use the on mouse functions. I believe that using Raycast is far more effective and I'll be showing Raycast. On triggers are to do with trigger collisions and we have physical collisions here. I'll be covering those. There's a couple of other special functions that run when the script is under certain conditions. On enable and on disable. As you can see here, or if you click on the description, this is when these functions are called. Another one that you'll use it a lot when you start out and for debugging is on GUI. On GUI is like update and fix update where it runs every single frame, but not exactly. On GUI can tend to run twice for every update. So if your update runs once, your function on GUI can possibly run twice. Again, you want as very little amount of calculations as possible in your GUI functions, just for displaying things. Okay, we pop down a little bit, we see a print, which is something I mentioned before, which is debugging. We'll get to that very soon. We have some other modifiers which aren't particularly inherent to functions. And the same here, although they are saying inherited functions, these are more commands, and we will certainly be learning about these. And the same here with some more commands. So to find this page again, and read as many descriptions as you want for yourself, start at the Unity scripting reference, scripting overview bookmark. Navigate over here to where you see mono behavior. Under functions and overridable functions is a list of all the main built-in functions. So let's look at what Unity has given us from the start. 
should point out my scripts do start out a bit different. I've edited this to lay out my way. You must probably have your brackets, your curly braces, in this position. Now I've found personally that I can read my scripts better when I have my curly braces on their own line. I see a clear definition between my condition and my outcome. So, back to the functions that are available. We have a function start by default. And if we read the reference for this, start is called just before any of the update methods is called the first time. This function will be called before this one is called the first time. So this will happen first. This is where people initialize things. When you initialize, you give your variables values and you can also make some initial calculations. So this is primarily what the start function is for. Also the awake also the on enable. Again, read all the descriptions to find out what is different between those two and start. Then we have an update. And this is called every frame. So this is what could be considered roughly as your main game loop. This is going to run every cycle. Whatever code you put in here, when it gets to the end, it's going to start again in a new cycle and it's going to execute that same code again. So this is an inbuilt constant loop as long as the script and the game object is enabled. More to that later. So I mentioned initializing values. So let's see what we can do to our variables in our start function. For our first integer Let's hard set this value to 5. We have a float. And we can hard set this value to 12.34. My string. Me any group of characters that you like that must be encapsulated within speech marks. For Booleans, we have two states. We can make them either true or we can make them false. Let's set this to true. My vector 3. We build a new vector 3. And as we know, a vector 3 holds three values it holds an x value, it holds a y value, and it holds a z value. As you can see, these can be integers or floats because a vector 3 is its own type of variable which can control both. So we'll save that script. Let Unity recompile that script. Now if we want to reset any values that are in our script, we can click on the gear icon and then reset. And as you see, when we have declared our values, we have not assigned any values. Assigning is giving our val a variable an actual value. Now we have assigned values in our start. This is called initializing. Let's make a comment here.
So this is declaring a variable, and this is assigning a value to a variable. Again, let's save that out. When we reset, we have no values assigned, so they will default to null or zeros. So let's hit play. Now if we look in our inspector while playing, we see our values have now been populated. They have been assigned. So all the values that we gave them in the start function. So there we have manipulating global variables from within a function. Now we can test our update function with something similar. Let's use the integer value. For every update, let's add 1 to our integer. Now, to add 1 to an integer, you can type it like that. Then I'll show you a couple of shorthand methods. You could also say, my first integer equals my first integer. but add to my first integer a value of 1. So this line is saying exactly the same thing as this line. So we can even comment that out. Now there is one more shorthand method for only special cases. When you are only adding 1, you can simply say my first integer plus plus. This will only increment my first integer by 1. So again, this says exactly the same thing as this. However, if you want to add 2, then you must use this method. Okay? There is no such thing, to my knowledge, as adding pluses here. So that's no. All those top three lines have exactly the same results. But for here, we're checking our update and manipulating our variable within an update. Save that script, that Unity compile. And when I hit play, watch the first integer. And that is climbing. So you can see, even adding two every cycle, every loop, every update, that is still moving quite fast. And there we have it. So there are variables and functions within a script. How different functions work at different times, and how to modify your variables your global variables from within functions. I've mentioned the word debugging a few times, so now it's time to look at debugging. Now, we can use the search box here to help the MB script and reference show us what we are looking for. So if I type in debug, hit enter. The scripting reference will give a lot of results based around debug. So I want to know about debug. And here, debug log. Logs a message to the Unity console. Let's have a look at that. So this is how you use a debug. You can ask it to output things to the console. And this shows you from where in your script you are and where things are happening. Console is this window I added here. You can find it again, window, console. This is where your debugs will print out. So let's test some debugs. Debug well. Now, I'm going to output a string, and in that string, you can say, here is the end of the start function. 
So this should give us a clear indicator in the console when the start has been run and all these values have been assigned. Similarly, in the update, we can add a debug. In the update function. Save that script out and go back to Unity. Now when we hit play, we can watch the console. And immediately you can see there is a whole lot of information being poured into the console. We can pause that and scroll through our console log. At the very top we have that one debug. Here is the end of the start function. We can get Unity to find in what script this came from. Simply double click on the message. Unity will open the script and we will highlight the line where that debug came from. Here is the end of the start function. So this happened at the start once. Before the first update we had a start and then we hit an update. We double click on that and yes there was where that was printed out. As update runs continuously you see from there on out we are definitely in the update function. So that is basic debugging. This is the most important tool that you should be using, especially when starting out, because you get to follow exactly where you are in your script. And you can also return values from your scripts. For example, I want to output what my first integer had counted up to by the time we printed here. We can add to our output. Now we've edited the script so we must stop, clear the console, we hit play again. Now if I hit pause, this time you can see in the update debug it is also giving us the additional information I asked for. You see it's not formatted well if I left a space in there. Save that. Again, clear, stop, and start. Our update debug is now also returning a value, something which we ask it to tell us. What is our first integer now after we've added two? So there we have some basic debugging and running functions and modifying variables within functions.